Taurus G3. I have this friend, his name is Travis. His part-time job for the United States Marines used to be flying this plane right here. He was an aggressor pilot for the Marines. It's flying F-5 Tiger IIs. It's such a cool job. Is that a cool job or what? This is a 1987 U.S. Navy F-5 Tiger II. They also used it at that time as an aggressor aircraft to simulate MiGs. Just like in the movie Top Gun. Yeah. So um, that's why the 46 is painted on there. That's why you have a really cool blue camouflage paint job on this F5 Tiger II. Again, this is a Navy version. Travis's plane was, I, I think that tan camouflage is yeah. what the Marines used to use. And I think they got rid of it. And now a private contractor firm does the aggressor job. I'm pretty sure. I've seen them a couple times. And from what I heard, oh, cool. there's like a kind of yeah it is a contractor or something and they just mm -hmm. bought up a couple old tigers and it's sad they gave that job away because yeah. i talked to travis i said how's the job he goes flying the plane was amazing he's like i love flying the plane i mean teaching the students how to dog fight against a wide variety of opponents really fun and again his job was to simulate migs and so he'd go up with a student maybe in a hornet and then he would do a series of maneuvers, pretty canned maneuvers really, trying to teach him how to do lead, energy manage, uh, BFM, basic fighter maneuvers. He said that part was awesome. He said everything else was horse shit. <laughs> he said he hated it. He's like going to the unit. He always had a ton of training to do and I can relate since I uh, retired out of the Air Force. We too had the same thing. He had to do like the combat fitness test. Yeah. Carrying a, a soldier over your shoulder, running for a hundred yards. <laughs> pull-ups, sit-ups. So he, he he wasn't like the most in shape dude. I was like, hey, man, how do you do that? He goes, ah, it's rough, but I can get through it. <laughs> he just stumbles through. I like that about the Marines. They though. don't mess around. They don't let you get yeah. too out of Everybody's shape. Everybody's an infantry man in the Marines. They don't care if you're a pilot, a crew chief, or a cook. You're going to learn how to shoot and you're going to be fit. Thematically, I guess this is kind of a good pick for this. Because I feel like the F5 is this almost forgotten little plane. Oh, it's such a good It was plane. affordable. It was cost effective. Mm -hmm. there, it, and really, it did some good out there. They were able to offer it to countries that probably wouldn't be able to afford a it, sweet F-15. Uh, we gave a lot to the South Vietnamese Air Force, and it did a lot of great work. Watch out. That canopy is going to pop off. you got to hold it. It did a lot of great work in in Vietnam, the F-5. And then the Tiger II came out, it was even better, improved uh, motors, I think better flight controls and some other upgrades like avionics. The US never bought it, I think mainly because of range. It's fairly short ranged and uh, for politics. I, I think we yeah. should have bought a buttload of Tiger IIs because they're so inexpensive, they're so reliable, they're really tiny, they're a really hard yeah. air to air uh, opponent to beat. That's one reason the Navy and the Marines used them for so long. They um, never liked really cheap cool stuff. Plan. Mm -mm. Like we would, mm -mm. we would have been a lot better had we just bought a bunch of little Tucanos or something to fly through. Right, Iraq. right, now, exactly. Instead of flying the wings off our expensive exactly. F-15s to loiter. Now later in other tabletops, I want to show you a Swiss F-5 Ooh, that we have. A cool one. Really cool. So it's the same scale. There's a 170 second scale Hobby Master, one of the many aircraft in the Nothing Fancy Aviation Museum. I wonder if anyone's still watching the video at this point. <laughs> I tuned in to learn about the Taurus G3. I don't care about no F5, nothing. Come on now, expand your horizons, my friend. Don't worry, the themes tie in. It'll merge. Affirmative. We do tie them in. Uh, I flew a plane similar to this. It was the trainer version, less powerful, of course, a T-38 Talon. That's what this patch is from. And then my dad named it the Talon, and this is his original patch right here. This is your grandfather's patch. You know that, right? Cool. Yeah, I need to put this on a backing board because it's starting to curl, but we'll we'll put that up over here. This is Dad's T-38 patch. So we have a real tie-in, actually, to the F-5. Uh, and Dad always talked very positively ab about that plane. Uh, he served with it as a Ford Air Controller in Vietnam when he flew OV-10s. Uh, he didn't have too much good to say about the South Vietnamese pilots. Hmm. 
Not so much. Interesting. Um, but the reserve pilots, the United States the reserve pilots that flew in Korea, some in World War II, were, he said, pretty ballsy and pretty amazing. It's a cool era. Yeah. You had dudes from Century fighters. some pretty different wars. F-100, F-105, F-101 Voodoo. We could go on and on. But here we go with the gun. Taurus G3, a by request GRV, y'all. I've had a lot of requests to get a G3. I had a really awesome TMP Patreon member offer me to send him, I'm sorry, send me his G3. Uh, I said, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> we'll get one locally uh, because it's widely available. And uh, getting your guns sent to Gunnies, uh, the Great American Gun Store, um, is uh, problematic for me. It's just a lot of time and effort. But Check this out. This actually doesn't come from Gunnies. It comes from our new associated gun store, Handgun Haven in Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. So round of applause yeah. uh, for Handgun Haven, Pratt and Company. Thank you very much for the loaner. Uh, we'll tell you at the end of the video if we're gonna buy this very inexpensive pistol. It retails TD for 350, and I think it's selling out there for around 250. Just about. Oh my gosh, for a new, <laughs> Nine millimeter combat worth worthy pistol. That's what it seems to be. It seems that way, dudes. Um, philosophy of use is, uh, I would say, uh, we don't want to jump the gun too much here, but I'd say philosophy of use is standard nine millimeter GTW pistol stuff. Home defense. Maybe you want to squirrel one away in your log cabin up there in northern Montana. That'd be kind of sick, by the way, wouldn't it? Yeah. Would you, I always. Would you want to fly in? Log cabin that you can only reach by aircraft. Could be kind of cool. There'd be an upside to it. It'd be hard for uh, other folks to get there. I fantasize about it a lot. Do you? I always, yeah. I always wonder how you'd be able to do that and fly in with weather reliably. That's the thing. And, and limited when... payload. So if you have a yeah. Piper Cub, dude, you're going to be carrying 100 pounds yeah. at a time. I can carry 110 pounds in my Super Cub. Yeah. And what happens when something breaks? I have to how go How about overland. a Carbon Crafter Cub? That'd be a little bit better. It'd be cool, but you still can't carry nothing. Affirmative. A 206 could do it. Here we go on another tangent that we do enjoy. Hopefully you do as well. Uh, yeah, you could squirrel it away in some place uh, that you think you need a 9mm pistol. And you don't want to go out and spend more money. Yeah. Uh, truck gun, you bet. Concealed carry gun. I'm going to say kind of yeah. Here's That's... why. What, what were you going to say? Well, it's just, it's just every time we do these, it's always kind of... Uh, when you tell people, yeah, I actually liked it, they turn their nose up at it. And there's, Some do. It's but Some do. We don't see it in person. Yeah. This... Well, I'm saying it's a concealed carry piece for two reasons. One, and this is amazing, Taurus got the weight right on this one. 25 ounces, dudes. 25 ounces for the G3. Fantastic. And it is a variation, I believe, on the 2013 Millennium G2 series. Yeah. A little bit of change here. It's like a product improved G2C. Right. And not 0.98 inches in width, the slide. 0.98 and overall 1.19 at the controls. So that's a slender pistol. Yeah. It's lightweight. Uh, I'd carry it. And it's affordable. Yes. This is a TH9C, also a Taurus. I think we'll do a separate mini pistol review on this one that's what we decided yeah and we won't give you too many aircraft it's, stories in that one we're just trying to just tear right through it it blows me away Subject how affordable change. that thing is both of them dude i found They're it for super like affordable. 220 at a store oh my goodness 219 dollars will get you a functioning nine mil pistol it's very exciting to bring these value point um what we're seeing is combat worthy handguns to the table right yep. it's really exciting uh has it always been this way um, I'll tell you what, there's been all along since doing TMP, we've had guns like the Ruger SR9. They're yeah. completely competent. Uh, that one we had had a little bit of an issue, but it got fixed. Uh, we've had them all along, yeah. but now it seems like at a proper weight, at a proper size, and the prices have come down, it's really a golden era. Taurus is one of the ones that improves a lot between gun to gun. And they, over the last few years, because I remember our, the first ones that came through, not too impressive. Yeah. Not very competitive, right. and each successive iteration, they're getting sharper and better. We didn't always say this, by the way, with the Taurus reviews we did. In fact, I've given a fair amount of negative publicity, stuff I've talked about. I don't want to go there again. But from what we're seeing now, Taurus guns, 
And there's others that are coming up for review, like the TH9 right here, and another one. We're seeing them pretty squared away. I just reviewed oh last God. year the TX22. I gave that as a recommend. Uh, with the ammo, I tried it. It had a couple burbles, but I'm, I'm really not too worried about TX22. I think it's overall a really good gun. Uh, philosophy of use, we'll just call it pretty much standard home defense. You can throw that one in there too. On we go with features review. Perfect grip, dude. Right? Excellent. Does it make you sad there's no interchangeable grip panels on not it? Not at all. Thank you. And we're seeing a pretty standard application of really nice texturing on these grips. Uh, and it's not just Taurus, we're seeing it across the board. Smith & Wesson is doing it. Ruger has been doing it for a number of years. We, we really, really like it. It is an aggressive texture. It locks in your hand. I don't think with the G3, you're gonna have to put any type of traction mm -hmm. stuff on it, do you? It's rare that I like stippling-ish and traction material this much. Yeah. A lot of them try to do it, but it comes off a little too rounded. This is really close to how Ruger's doing their stuff lately. One of the first ones we saw doing it was the MMP Pro, was it? Mod 2? Yeah. Yeah, we tested that in 40 cal and we really loved that grip. We raved about it and here we see it's becoming standard amongst many manufacturers once again. Great grip angle, it's undercut here. We have texturing on the front strap. Thumbs up from nothing fancy and TD. Nice trigger guard, it works with gloves. We have a nice indented front of the trigger guard, albeit non-textured, which is uh, a miss. Easily rectified, however. A really nice trigger, believe it or not, with a caveat. Okay, and you and I kind of disagree on this point, just a little bit, because you were shooting it and you said, hey, I don't really mind it. Uh, here's my criticism on the trigger, is that it pulls really deep. So look how, how much distance you're gonna cover with your G3 before anything yeah. happens. It is a long pull. Therefore, no magazine disconnect safety, so that's really awesome. Excellent. But uh, the reset is really important in this pistol when you're shooting because don't come all the way forward, you're gonna waste a lot of time. So you come all the way forward like that, which you can, and we did, uh, you're better off to shoot to reset. And I rarely say that, but in this pistol, I would say that's where you wanna do it. And the reset isn't super short, it's kind of midway. Yeah. Uh, the trigger pull itself is pretty excellent. Did I measure it? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I did. Five pounds, 12 ounces. Five pounds, 12 ounces on this striker fired Taurus G3. So there's your uh, your reset. And when I fired it to reset, I was pretty happy. Yeah. Um, now, it is a plastic trigger face. I have no problems with that as long as it doesn't break. <laughs> Going back into the history of TMP, when that one Taurus trigger yeah. blade broke in the very cold uh and guess what we did test this in the cold not arctic cold it was in the 20s yeah didn't break and so it looks very glockish to me in blade safety lever in there uh, i like the trigger how about you i liked it for the price point i wouldn't expect much better like you were I, raving about it in field. You said yeah. great trigger. Yeah, it's way better than the other one too. The G2 we shot was pretty good. It was. But I felt like this one was a lot more clear about what was going on. Uh, I reviewed in 2017 the PT-809. I love that gun. I thought the trigger on that one was really good too. Three slot Picatinny rail on the dust cover. It's kind of a lot of rail for a little pistol like this. It is. And this is a Glock 19 sized pistol. Right. Yeah. Right? You don't see something, you don't see that much on its competitors so much. Here comes a Gen 4 G19 out of one of our systems. You can see, again, they are about the same size. Yep. You have a single slot rail on that one. Lord Gaston saw fit to grace you with one <laughs> slot. And I don't think it's Picatinny. It's a funky proprietary Glock size. Actually, it's close enough. It is, it works. It's close 1913 works on it. But some people it. are picky about it. Uh, so yeah, nice three uh, three slot rail. That is a competitive thing that the pistol manufacturers are doing more and more. You're gonna see yeah. more slots. Beveled nose at the front. We love that. That's love that. pretty excellent. I wish more stuff had that, even if it's not a carry piece. Right, It right. makes it, cozy. it's easier to put in your holster. All right, it's a simple thing to add. Uh, four inch barrel in this version, chrome lined. It is safe to shoot with lead because it's conventional conventional rifling. And it has a matte finished, I believe nitride coated slide on it. 
Yeah, nitride coating. Uh, a little bit of a sharp edge here. It looks almost kind of like a SIG coming back here. Yeah. Maybe even sharper than a SIG. Fort serrations, back serrations are sharp. They work just fine. And then how about the sights, TD? I actually kind of like them. Three dot standard. They're polymer. I Some people don't like that so much. Yeah. I don't mind it. I was making they're, sure they're not trits. No, they're at this price point, no way. They're Ugh. chunky, they're easy enough to identify. I like three dot sights still. They may not be in vogue for some, but. I don't have a problem that they're polymer either. And I've always said that, I'm in the minority. Everyone acts like steel sights are, are absolutely mandatory. I say, show me your gun with polymer sights where you've worn them off. Yeah. I bet the average pistol user does not put even a hundred rounds through their average combat pistol. Especially this That's one. That's proven by experience here in TMP. I will say I have one experience with Taurus customer service when I busted off my front poly sight on my 1911. And? They sent me a new one in like a week. Cool. I, I've heard quick. mostly good things about Taurus service. And like we're saying, I, we just think the management at Taurus is doing so much better. Yeah, they're, they're really trying to improve. They're better. Yeah, so good sights on that. The controls are okay. I don't really like this safety lever. It's not really positive uh, like the Ruger 5.7. Yeah. The Ruger 5.7 is really positive, like a really awesome 1911 like we talked about. Uh, you can't ignore it. I would maybe, maybe think about milling it off or removing it and just getting rid of it. But if you do that, then if you have a problem, you send the gun back to Taurus. Yeah. Guess what? It's not warranty covered. If you've done any modifications like that, they won't like it. And maybe the DA will think you're some kind of self-styled gunslinger. Yeah. If you have to use it. What are you doing? Uh, Modifying it. He, he, that's going back to a conversation we had 10 years ago here. So yeah. mods to guns if you go to court. Um, I'm not going to go there either. Who knows? Slide release is I right thought, here. It looks kind of SIG-ish to me. Kind of like the bent metal. And it it's comfortable. An, it's not terrible. It it's great. a little small. I always like them just bigger than this for some reason. Here's your mag release. It is reversible to the left side for you lefties, although the controls don't come over to this side. And there's the mag well right here. Tell them about the mags, TD. It's uh, kind of an interesting system because you get some uh, price point options here. Let me tell them first what comes with this version. You're going to get a 15 round uh, made by Mechgar, right? Yeah. 15 round and a 17 round with a polymer insert which is interesting. I would really consider gluing this so it's not moving around or getting lost. Uh, this is nice, and I've talked about this before. It makes it so you don't wiggle this extended yep. magazine around, for one, and maybe induce a jam, and also it gives you a longer grip if you have larger hands. And there's even a little cottage industry of these for other types of mags for it. Uh, and tell them, you, you were telling them about other mags yeah. that it will work with. And this is fascinating. And TD found this out with a little uh, interweb clicking around. I always like being able to use other ones. This is a SIG 226 extended mag. 20 round SIG, old school 20 round SIG, not a Metgar. That's a factory SIG mag that we had since probably the 80s. Yeah, the 80s this is, is when I started old. running them. Old school. But I, I really like the idea. Look how cool it looks. Put it in. Dude. Okay, now use the uh, slide release, see if you can rack that dummy round in there. Works just fine. Oh, by the way, there is a viewing port right here in the chamber, so close it, you can see it when it's loaded. For a brass cartridge, you'll totally be able to yeah. tell. That's just an aluminum snap cap in there now. Look it, how cool that looks, dude. It's one of the things that bugs me when they have new pistol designs and they feel mm -hmm. the need to do a new mag. There are so many good magazine designs on the market that people may already have, that they right. already afford, that they stocked up on. Yes, for some reason, they'll pop something out and go, hey, throw all the other stuff away. This is the new one. The Mossberg MC1 did that, so it uses Glock yeah. 43 mags, and I, I gave him big kudos Excellent. for doing that. So uh, really cool, and it uses a variety of mags, and others, not just a SIG, right? Yeah, you can use TP9SAs. Uh, it won't hold open on that one. So the follower won't do mm -hmm. last shot hold open on but it. But it's compatible with a bunch of the other Taurus ones. Okay. So we had zero options. problems with these magazines. This is a 17 rounder. If it's made by Mechgar, uh, don't even worry about it. Yeah. It's totally awesome. Polymer base plate, uh, really nice. I just love, love the yellow follower in it too. That's super cool. Uh, features, I think that's most of everything. Oh, field strip, super quick. It's uh, like a Glock and uh, safety check, taking out that snap cap. I'm not sure why you put a snap cap in there. Just to show them that it picks it up. Um, so what you're going to do, safety check. You do have to pull the trigger. Uh, it doesn't, let me do this first. Pop that. There we go. I don't mind pulling the trigger at all. Nice big slide rails in here. Double nested recoil spring, as you can see. 
Very Glock-like, really. Big surprise. I, I never... If it works, don't fix it. I wish we had a word to just say Glock pattern, and it would package up all these Glock traits yeah. and just across the board go, it's a Glock pattern, but... Yeah, so that's a field strip. Super, super duper easy. I love it. Uh, and then we go on to how did it shoot? Tactical Doodle, what'd you think? I came away impressed. Yeah. I didn't expect it. Yep. And it's the, what, third a time? $230, $250 yeah. gun. Did I pick it up and I go, well, I probably won't like it. You know, it's I'm generally not a fan of this size. I like them either a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. And what that's do you know? That's what she said. I ended up liking it. Well, here's the deal too. We used a wide variety of ammunition with the Taurus G3 to include a flat nosed a NATO round that caused a lot of problems in a lot of different pistols. Everything hits High it. High end pistols. This one chugged along with that perfectly. We used a wide variety of uh, reloads with it. I shouldn't say reloads, but just leftover rounds that we had. It worked with those. It worked with steel. Mm-hmm. Steel rounds. Now, I will say something. With a steel, I did give it a very light spraying of WD-40, which I'm starting to do more and more. Not a lot, and then I wipe it down. It seems like steel runs so much better when you do that. Mm. And if you're going to store it, uh, definitely. No, we don't use steel as a go-to-war round. This is just planking fodder. Uh, I don't remember a single stoppage with a G3. I don't either. Nothing. Uh, dealing with a deep trigger pull, I like the trigger especially when shot to reset. The sights were good, the, the grip was good. The recoil impulse was just fine. It doesn't sit like massively low in hand like some designs do, but you know what? I didn't care. Mm -hmm. It shot awesome, and that takes us to accuracy of the G3. G3, this is at seven and a half yards, a wide variety of jack and hollow point shot, just to test reliability and accuracy. Great group, great group, great group. Four shots, dude. Great group. Look at that. Uh, I said trigger pulls deep. Watch the safety. So you can actually push the safety on and it's shooting low is what I said. Okay, so that's a nice, nice note. This is in December. And a shot. Nice group. Nice group. Look at that, dude. From the Taurus G3, y'all. Yeah, and then wow, I have a lot of paper on this one. That's, that's cool. Look at this. I got it squared away, dude. Ten yards standing. Look at that. Look at that, look at that. Boom. Out of a $250 pistol, shut your mouth. That is incredible. That is, I don't know, honestly, it's shooting as good as anything else I bring to tabletop. Mm -hmm. Anything is, uh, you know, it's doing awesome. By the way, this is a Microtech SOCOM Purple. Isn't that cool? Limited edition automatic blade, and yes, it is expensive, but oftentimes this really cool kit is I'll put a link below. These are gonna sell out very quickly at Blade HQ. Violet blue, look at that. Oh my gosh. I reviewed the SOCOM uh, back in what, 2011? Yeah. 12, actually the mini SO SOCOM back in like 2008. But this larger one, I forget exactly when I did it. But we have a manual action one of these, but never an automatic. Look at that, cool. Cool knife, cool knife. It's funny how the purples and the pinks that Microtech does, people go, yeah, why would they do that? And then it's sold instantly. Yeah, and they, they disappear exactly. so fast. And it's funny, guys uh, will complain about the cost of a Microtech and next time they click on it, they're completely sold out. So yeah. uh, there's reality and then there's the internet. That brings us to the fact of, would we buy a Taurus G3? TD. Me personally, no. I have other carry stuff already. Um, I would. I wouldn't hesitate at all. For its low price, you bet. If I had a need for it. I mean, to just gratuitously go out and buy four yeah. G3s. I'm saying if I had a need for it, no problem. But it is not the only game in town. There are some other great competitive offerings that I have reviewed that I do really, really like. They may be better. They may be worse in some categories than the Taurus G3. But we like them here, and we don't really care if the internet does or not. How about the Smith & Wesson SD9VE? This is a used one at Gunny's for 220 <laughs> bucks. So it's at the same price range. This was extraordinarily accurate. It does have the articulated Smith & Wesson Sigma-style trigger. I don't dig it so much, but it shoots so good, I don't care. It was 100% reliable. Go watch that review. It's small, trim, compact, same size as this. Same price. I'm just offering that out. Yeah. Uh, other ones too, the Masada. 
Uh, nine mil, we don't have one on tabletop. We're rolling some footage. Outstanding value gun. Bursa makes that BP9 for about 260. Oh yeah, I want to get that and review it. Yeah. That could be awesome. It's about the same weight, isn't it? I think so. Uh, how about the Ruger Security 9? We liked that gun. I don't know if we loved it, but we liked it. That's going to be pricier though. True. About 340 right. yeah. street for Security right. 9s, if I remember. Uh, the SR9C? I think about yeah. the same. Yeah. yeah, it might be a little bit more, but there, there's a four, four, couple value guns. 450 or something for an SR9. Uh, what I really love about this gun, among many things, is that it's 25 ounces. That's the same weight as a Glock. Standard to measure as far as weight goes. And it's thin for what it is. It has good magazine capacity. The trigger is really excellent, given its, uh, you know, its weirdness that I talked about already. Great grip panels. It comes in six different models. It's basically all going to be nine. They're not offering it, as far as I know, in other calibers mm -hmm. as of yet, because that's what everyone buys. No one's buying 40 anymore. It's just nine. They'll probably have special colors coming out soon. They've done like mm -hmm. pink, seafoam greens, purples, blues, FDE. I think it speaks to the market that Taurus is, I think they're really capturing. And it's that, not necessarily the, the, sh super recreational shooters or competition it's the everyday concealed carry crowd right that want to get a carry piece maybe mm -hmm. practice with it a few times other than that it's riding along with them and i think that represents a large segment of the gun buying public Huge they're, one. they're guys and gals that won't go to youtube watch a gun review mm -hmm. they just go to their local gun store they want something affordable that will work ladies and gentlemen tmp presents the pretty excellent and very affordable taurus g3 sweet